right, but I'm sure glad you're home again, Daddy. Oh, it's nice to hear you say that, Alan. I'm not going away again, either. And as soon as I get a job, we're going to have a lot of fun together. Just you and me, huh? Gee, that'll be swell. Maybe next month I can have a birthday party. Oh, why, of course you can. But how would you like to ride on the merry-go-round right now, huh? Sure, I like that. <laughs> swell. Come on, let's go. Daddy, what's this stool? Stool pigeon? Oh. What? Right. That's anyone who snitches. Why do you ask that, dear? Well, the lady next door said that's what you were, but I don't believe it. You wouldn't snitch on anybody, would you, Dad? Well, uh, certainly not. But you see, dear, sometimes what we do is misunderstood. I know. Sometimes Aunt Helen spanked me for things I didn't do. Well, after all, honey, it's what's in your heart that counts, not what people think. Dad, you mean that I know better than anybody else? Whether I'm good or bad? That's exactly what I mean, honey. ways to make money without having to work yourself. I'll have people working for me. You wait and see. <laughs> A wise guy, huh? No one's gonna outsmart me. I'll know all the angles. <laughs> if I can just get this piece in here, the job's finished. I don't know how you passed inspection this morning. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Didn't watch your neck very well behind this ear. That happens to be a birthmark, and it doesn't wash off. All right, all right. Don't get mad about it. Back to sleep. What time are you getting up? I have a singing audition at two o'clock, so I can wait until noon. Lucky. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Keep your chin up, kid. You'll get a break. If I don't get one pretty soon, I'll be joining you at the factory. <laughs> hey, Rita, the boss wants you. Oh, gee. Hope I didn't slip up on those orders yesterday. Remember, there was a couple I wasn't so sure of. Well, it's a cinch on the carpet for something. Well, guess I better go in and take my medicine. Come in. You sat for me. I'm Rita Adams. Oh, yes. Sit down, Miss Adams. As you know, since we started working on defense orders, it's become necessary to bond all our employees. Yes, I know. I made out my questionnaire when all the other girls did. That's the point I'm coming to. This morning, we were informed that the insurance company has refused to bond three employees. Unfortunately, you were among them. Oh, but, but how could they do such a thing? 
They have the right to deny any of our employees a bond. I know, but, but in my case, what reason did they give? They never give us the result of their findings. Would the fact that I'm the daughter of an ex-convict have anything to do with it? Probably. I'm sorry, but you'll have to see the cashier. except I just got fired. Fired? What for? Seems the bonding company didn't like my family tree. I was afraid something was going to happen like that, Rita. Well, anyway, it's a good thing the rent's paid. Any mail? No, but your boyfriend has telephonitis again. Probably on another binge called four times today. That's probably him again. Hello? Oh, hello, Harold. No, thanks. Not tonight. No, I'll have dinner at home with Donna. You've been drinking again, haven't you? Oh, look, look, dear, I've only had a couple and I feel fine. Oh, why won't you have dinner with me? No, I'm not in the mood. Oh, come on. And I promise you I'll not take another drink all evening. Oh, except maybe buttermilk. <laughs> How's that, darling? No, call me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Oh, Rita. I know that butting into anyone's private life is looking for trouble the hard way, but... I think you're letting yourself in for an awful lot of grief, wasting your time on that playboy. You're probably right. I think Harold will settle down soon. What's worrying me more right now is finding another job. Well, if I'm not getting too personal, why don't you get in touch with your old pals, Bob Elliott or Mickey Roma? They ought to be able to help you get something. They're both doing well. No, I couldn't ask Bob. As for Mickey, well, anything he might offer wouldn't interest me. Just an idea. Forget it. Thanks, it's the same. Hello, is this the Clover restaurant? In the cart you had for a waitress. Well, I'm very sorry, but you just won't do. Look, Bob, Rita feels pretty low since she lost her job. I thought perhaps you could help her get some kind of work. Fine. Don't tell her I called, will you? All right. Bye-bye. Hello, Rita. Remember me? Bob Elliott. This is a surprise. Come in. Oh, thanks. How have you been? Oh, swell. And you? Oh, pretty good. Come in. Sit down. Thanks. Say, how is it I haven't seen you in all this time? Oh, I've been busy. Things always seem to come up. Tell me about yourself. What have you been doing? <laughs> Remember how Mickey and all the other kids used to rib me about making airplanes when we were in the orphanage? I certainly do. I'm an engineer now. Over at the Wilson plant. Been there six months. Congratulations. Gee, I'm glad to hear someone from the Curtis homes made good. Oh, it was a little tough going at first, but... Oh, let's talk about you. How have you been? What have you been doing? I've been doing all right up until recently. Right now, I'm looking for a job. Hmm. Oh, why don't you come over to our plant? I'm sure with what little influence I've got, we could find a place for you. Thanks, Bob. I'll do that. How about our having dinner tonight? Talking over old times. That's sweet of you. Can we make it some other time? I already have a date. Who's the boyfriend? Mickey Roma? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mickey will always be my best pal, but never the boyfriend. Oh, there is someone else then, huh? Yes, I don't think you know him. His name is Harold DeWitt. Thank you. Hello, Harold. Oh, hello, Mickey. Hmm. Celebrating again, huh? Oh, no, no. Yeah, just having a few drinks while I'm waiting to take the loveliest girl in the world out to dinner. Uh, I see. I bet you don't know who's the loveliest girl in the world. 
I've seen her with you enough times to know. As a matter of fact, I knew her before you did. Really? Uh-huh. Her name's Rita Adams. <laughs> Put her there, old pal. Say, isn't she a wonderful girl, Mickey? Sure. Now, have a little drink. Oh, no, thanks. Here she is now. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, Harold. Hello, Mickey. Well, we were just talking about you. Uh, I don't know what we were saying, Mickey. Don't bother. I'm sure it was something very nice. Shall we go? Oh, sure. See you later, Mickey. Harold, please drive slower. Don't worry, darling. I've been driving for 10 years. Never even bumped a fender. Harold, there's a cop following us. A cop? Well, that cop is getting me. Wouldn't it be better to stop and take the ticket? Oh, don't be silly, darling. Relax. Up in a fine jam yeah, this time. I know, I know. I ducked the police over at the office and then talked to Dad by long distance. He said to see you at once. Yes, I talked to your father a few minutes ago. And I doubt if I want to be a party to his suggestion. Oh, you've got to get me out of this somehow. Uh, ruined Dad politically. Driving a car while drunk, leaving the scene of the accident after killing a pedestrian, and other charges which they'll undoubtedly bring, you can't miss going to the penitentiary. Can't you do something? Uh, what did Dad have to say? You told him Miss Adams was with you, didn't you? She was. I thought you promised your father you'd give that girl up. Oh, I'm just stringing her along. Uh, never mind that. What do you want me to do? Rita Adams evidently thinks you're serious and plans to marry you for your money. Your father believes this type of girl might be persuaded to assume full responsibility for the accident, providing you uh, promise something. Marriage, if necessary. Hey, that's an idea. Yeah, I think I can get her to do it. Well, remember, while I can't sanction this course, it's what your father wants. And I wouldn't waste any time seeing Miss Adams. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will work out just the way we want it. Keep me advised. Okay. I know it sounds terrible, darling, but... Well, it's the only way we'll ever have the happiness we both want. If you do it, I'll never take another drink again as long as I live. Harold, do you realize what you're asking me to do? Yes, darling, but... Well, what other solution is there? If my father finds out what happened, I'll be fired and disinherited. Have you... have you talked to anyone else about this? Yes, darling, my lawyer, Bruce King. It was his idea. Now, he said that I haven't got a chance to beat the case. But that he can guarantee that you won't go to jail. I don't see how that's possible. After all, I have to plead guilty. But you'll get your probation or a suspended sentence. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, do this for me, darling. You'll never regret it. All right, Harold. Go back to your hotel. Police are probably there already. Tell them I borrowed your car last night. Oh, darling, you're the most wonderful girl in the world. We'll be married as soon as King straightens everything out. Oh, I'd like to see my dad object to our marriage now. Harold, if this will make a man of you, I'm willing to assume all responsibility. Oh, darling, you don't know what this means to me. Oh, 
I'll make all the arrangements and call you right back. Motion denied. Mr. Adams, you have been convicted of a cowardly crime. I have taken into consideration the fact that you've never been in trouble before. And for that reason, I sentence you to not less than one year, nor more than five, in the state penitentiary for women. Court's adjourned. I'm sorry. We did everything possible. Why you took this rap is none of my business. But you might be interested to know that your boyfriend, Harold DeWitt, quit the bank the day after you were convicted. He crawled back to his father. Let's forget about my case, Mickey. I made a mistake. It's all over. No, but I hate to see a friend of mine get double-crossed without doing something about it. Forget it, Mickey. It's too late to do anything about it now, anyway. Did I tell you that Bob and Donna came up to see me? Gee, you've all been so swell. Oh, by the way, Donna landed a job at a radio station yesterday. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Tell me, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. And I guess my time is up. Listen, Rita, if there's anything you need, all you've got to do is yell for it, and I'll take care of it. I know you will. Goodbye. Goodbye. I know this much. The lawyer who made her plead guilty got plenty for whatever trick was pulled. Maybe you're right, but how are we going to prove it? Uh, you wouldn't want to go in for a little burglary, would you, Bob? No, thanks. What's on your mind? Well, forget it. Oh, here they come. Hello, boys. Hello, Rita. Hello, Gee, Rita. Good to have you here to... Meet me like this? Well, they insisted on coming. A lot more than I expected. You look wonderful, Rita. Thank you, Bob. You too, Mickey. I, uh, I guess you're kind of anxious to get away from this place, huh? Gosh, I certainly am. Where would you like to go first? Oh, Mickey, for months I've been looking forward to a real meal. I know just the place. Well, if you got a lot of money, because I can eat three full-course dinners. I've got plenty of what it takes. Come on. <laughs> record, I can't slip much slower. Don't talk like that. You'll get a job in no time. I'll get it. Hello, Mickey. Hello. Just now. Answers to what? So you went to jail for a heel like DeWitt. Boy, did they give you the business. Mickey, what are you talking about? If DeWitt's old man happens to have any money, you don't have to worry about being broke. Here, if there's any doubt as to how they played you for a chump, here, read some of those letters. I read them. How did you get this file? Well, I got it, didn't I? How was my business? I know you got a tough deal, kid, but I thought you should know the truth. Mickey? Well, I've got to catch a train. Where are you going? I've got a deal on that looks like a pretty good setup. I'll write you as soon as I get settled. And you, kid, you keep your chin up. One of these days, I'm going to intimidate a nightclub owner into giving you a real break. Thanks, Mickey. Watch your step. Goodbye. Goodbye. Rita, I... Gee, and how I was double-crossed. Look, here's a letter signed by Clarence DeWitt. He paid that lawyer $10,000 to send me to jail. 
And all that time, I thought I was helping that weakling son of his. Well, don't you think it's sort of dangerous to have those letters here? Right now, nothing's dangerous. Can I give you a lift, honey? <laughs> well, that all depends. On what? I'd like to get out in the country for a breath of fresh air. Honey, I had the same idea. What are we waiting for? see us up here. That's very important, I imagine. Oh, it is to me. Me too. Yeah. All right, Papa, just stick up. What? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, empty those pockets and make it snappy. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes ma'am. Don't, don't shoot. Eighty-one dollars, not bad. Thanks for the buggy ride. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to borrow your car. Don't know how you're going to explain this to the wife, but that's your headache, not mine. You can't get away with this, young woman. Now, you sit down there and keep quiet, or I'll take your trousers. You'd look nice walking into town without them, wouldn't you? You can't do this to me. Well, if there's anything funny in that paper, let me in on it, will you? You know, Donna, I never realized until recently how many phonies there are in this world. You ought to know. Harold DeWitt was the biggest hypocrite I ever met. The past doesn't interest me. Well, honey, the future certainly doesn't look any too bright. I'm going to do a little cheating myself. Now, Rita, we need money. Here, but... here. Put that in the cash box. Where'd all that come from? Oh. I played poker with an old way, and I dealt the cards. Must have been a stacked deck. It was. Oh, I know how you feel, but please be careful. Donna, you can't do anything in this world without money. I'm going to get... I'm all excited about. Are you sure we're going to be better off out there? Saw the letter Mickey wrote. He said he had a job all lined up for you. Yeah, I know, but what do you intend to do? Uh, I have an idea I'll be plenty busy. What time's our train leave? About an hour. We better step on it. I'm almost ready. Town. Well, from what I've seen of it, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to like it here. Well, I like it. And I do appreciate your getting me this job here, Mickey. Uh, it's no trouble at all. As a matter of fact, they tell me you're terrific. Oh, I don't know about that. You have a lot of influence in this town, huh? Ooh, well, I'm doing all right. That's me. Good luck. I'm in love with dynamite. Yes, I know, I know. My 
My heart's higher than a kite. Yes, I know. I know. I you heard from Bob lately? Yes, he has a good job with Interstate Airlines. It's fine. What can I do? I'm in the middle where you're concerned. I'll wind up behind the eight ball. I know, I know. But this love with you all, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, and you will let me go. But till then, you're mine, I know. Hey, that kid I'm is so great. That's what I always told you. I know, I know. My heart is bright as the moon that is mellow. I know, I know. I am just a fool because I know I'll get burned. What can I do? I'm in the middle where you're concerned. I'll wind up behind that eight ball. I know. I know, but this love with you is worth it all, all. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, eeny, meeny, jure, meeny. If you let me go until then, you're mine. I know, you know, we know that you are mine. I know. Like it? You've got nothing to worry about, kid. Thanks. Good girl. Chief, how long are we going to stand for this sort of thing? Every time a crackpot wants publicity, he takes a rap at the police department. Then we do nothing about it. Sit down, Joe. I'm way ahead of you this time. Did you see what DeWitt said about the department? Yeah. Well? In all large groups of men, there's bound to be a little dishonesty. But I think we have one of the finest police departments in the United States. I agree with you there. But it's about time we stop being on the defensive. Right. About a month ago, I planted a boy with the underworld. Who? Your old partner's son. Jimmy Kelly? Jimmy Kelly? But he's not a member of the department. I took him off the waiting list. We're paying for him through the secret fund. It's a swell idea. But that's a dangerous assignment. How can he get away with it? One day I was looking at the pictures in the rogues gallery and I got an idea. You ever see that mug before? <clears throat> yeah, that's Billy Dugan. They don't come any tougher than him. Jimmy Kelly. Look alike, don't they? Now, I hope for Jimmy's sake that Dugan is safely in jail somewhere. I don't think we're that fortunate. From my information, he's in New York, still in the same muscle racket. Then I'd better keep an eye on Jimmy Kelly. Yes, but don't let on you know what he's doing. Oh, of course not. Mays, I got a hot tip in the fifth at Hialeah. Good luck. I think I'll go on back and get it down. I've got a couple for you, too, honey. Oh, gee, that's swell, thanks. Okay, kid. Into the stretch. It's blue suit by two. You take this one, Dugan. What is yours? 35 bucks. And no alibis. Nobody's stalling me, pal. I'll be back in 35 seconds flat. Where's Mac? Mac won't be back till 8 o'clock tonight. Leave any dough with you? Nope. I can't wait around till 8 o'clock. Mac shouldn't give me the runaround like this. No, I wouldn't put it that way, Mr. Wise Guy. As long as you say, mister. I guess I can't object to the Monica Wise guy. Say, look, bud, if you don't want to buy anything, will you please scram? Listen, sister, after you've been working around here a little while longer, you'll realize I only call once a week. I said Matt won't be back till 8 o'clock tonight. I heard you the first time. But there's a little item I'd like to mark paid. Hey, what is this? You can... Take it easy, sister. Just tell Mac Bill Dugan was in. He'll understand. Goodbye. Got a Mac with 35. How are we doing? Not as good as last week.
Hello, Marlo. Oh, it's you again. How are you? I could be better. Business hasn't been so good lately. Ah, quit your squawking. You're doing all right. Yeah, but with our overhead, it should be better, to. Come on, flip over your page and let's see a liquor total. $3,008. That'll make just 300 you owe me, pal. Take out a check. Oh, no. Cash. Well, see you next week. Hope business picks up. Yeah, thanks. through for the day? Yeah. There you are, 2,000. Tell Parrish and Woods the boys are here now. What's wrong? Mm, nothing. Guess they want to give you a pep talk about your receipts not being what they should. Well, what did you fellas bring in? 2,000. That's not so good. Well, the way we figure, Mr. Parrish, places are not running wide open. Uh, everybody's kind of careful. Afraid that it'd be slipped a subpoena to appear before the grand jury. We want the town to run the same as it always has. That's what we keep telling everybody, but... Oh. That's getting serious, this reform crowd. Looks like they're gonna give us plenty of trouble. What do you think we ought to do? I'll do something, you can bet on that. Voters' committee is determined that we need a new mayor, a new district attorney, and a new sheriff. We propose to make startling revelations which will undoubtedly make people in high places jittery. And you may be sure that the underworld of this city will be subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury within the next few weeks. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard an address by Clarence DeWitt. Chairman of the Voters Committee. This is station. Well, he's certainly putting up a great bluff, Lou. Parrish, what do you think he wants? I don't know. Nobody seems to be able to get to him. This reform stuff is great publicity for his cheap hotels. What happens to us if they start throwing those subpoenas around? Don't you worry. I'll see that nothing happens. Officer, how long before the grand jury will hear witnesses? No, oh, about 20 minutes. Oh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm checking all those having subpoenas. When I call your name, please answer. Parrish. Yeah? Wood? Yeah. Mason? Present. Bill Dugan? Yeah. Frankie Bailey? Frankie Bailey here? And he isn't. All right, Bailey. Better get down to the grand jury now. Who's testifying besides me? The whole underworld. You're supposed to be the key witness. The guy that's lifting the lid wide open. You think I'm doing the right thing, don't you? Well, if you're telling the truth, and you're getting nothing for your testimony, of course you're doing the right thing. A lot of people think I'm getting dope from DeWitt. Come on, let's get going. Be with you in a minute.
Rita. Hello, Mickey. How are you? Fine, thank you. Sit down. Rita, remember those letters I took from Bruce King's office? Uh-huh. What have you done with them? I still have them. Why? Well, as you know, Clarence DeWitt, who was responsible for your taking that rap, is now heading a reform group in this town. And he's interfering with the people I work for. And those letters will come in mighty handy. I realize that, Mickey, but that's the main reason I came out here. I'm going to play a lone hand with DeWitt. I want more than money from that old hypocrite, and I think my plan will work. Just what is your plan? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is oppose him at his own game, the radio. All of us have been victimized by hypocrites, some more than others. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that hypocrisy is responsible for thousands of twisted lives which will never again be normal. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is far more honesty and integrity in the police department of this city than can ever be found among the reform group led by Clarence DeWitt. Joe? I wonder what she's after. I don't know, but I think we ought to check. Mr. DeWitt, while claiming to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, substantiates nothing. I shall give you a better understanding of this holier-than-thou individual in subsequent talks. Thank you. Good night. The foregoing was a paid political broadcast. Say, she's terrific. Wonder if DeWitt was listening in. You can bet he was. I think we should have a little talk with Miss Adams without further delay. We're, of course, interested, Miss Adams. But your terms seem, uh, shall we say, slightly exorbitant. Let's stop bargaining, gentlemen. You've had this racket to yourselves for a long time. If someone doesn't make a deal with DeWitt soon, you know it'll happen as well as I do. You want to make it a four-way syndicate? Is that the idea? Exactly. Parrish, Wood, Adam, and DeWitt. And if you gentlemen have no objections, I'd like to deal the cards. Well, that sounds reasonable. Suppose we leave it this way, Miss Adams. If you can do business with DeWitt, then I assure you we'll be more than willing to cooperate. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, have you any preference for mayor? Why, well, yes. Yes, I think Frank Bond would be more than satisfactory. I'll see that DeWitt supports him. Good day. Good day. Well, I think it might work out all right. Uh, Miss Adams to see you. Adams? Adams? Uh, I have no appointment with the Miss Adams. Oh, very well. Send in. Wish to see me, Miss Adams? Apparently, my name doesn't convey anything to you. Fortunately not. I'm Rita Adams, remember? Yes. Yes, of course. You and I have had an appointment for the last two years. I sat in prison while your son lived on velvet. Big, strong, handsome Harold writing sweet letters to a girl who was serving his sentence. Please, Miss Adams. You evidently haven't heard that my son was killed just two weeks ago in an automobile accident. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm not surprised. The way you brought him up, I rather expected something like that to happen. I resent that. Of course you do. If you don't mind, I'm here to talk about something else. Mr. DeWitt, we all make mistakes, and I'm here to collect on one you made. These photostats will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. You can see I have enough data there to put you in the penitentiary. Young lady, let's get down to cases. How much money do you want for the original letters? I'm afraid on that point we'll disagree. I would, uh, say 5,000 suit you. Let's not be petty. How much do you want? You've taken an unusual interest in politics lately. You intend to run for office? I fail to see what bearing that has on the business at hand. I, I possibly might like to run for, say, the governorship, but uh, what has that got to do with it? You accept my proposition, you can be governor. This is the boldest blackmail I've ever heard of. I don't want your money, Mr. DeWitt. In fact, I'm going to have an envelope sent to you every week with plenty of currency in it. I'll inform the police at once. Go ahead. I'd be glad to go to jail if I could take you with me. You seem very confident, Miss Adams. I am. After all, I'm playing your game. You know what the world doesn't know never happened. 
Mr. DeWitt, I hold all the picture cards. But if you think I'm bluffing, all you have to do is call my hand. Give me a day or two to think it over. I'll give you until this time tomorrow. Don't fail to call me, because I won't wait any longer. Good morning, Mr. DeWitt. Oh, good morning. I see you're ahead of schedule. Yes, I... I want you to know that I've given your proposition very careful consideration. And what decision have you reached? Seems as though there's little choice in the matter. Won't you sit down? After you, please. Ah, I'm afraid we're political partners, all right. But I wish it understood that I must be perfectly at liberty to continue with my civic activities. Otherwise, it might be rather embarrassing for both of us. Oh, I assure you, I have no intention of interfering in that matter. And how long does this, uh, this relationship of ours continue? Until certain requirements are met. Once they are, you can have your incriminating letters back and forget the matter entirely. Do I understand that you expect me to endorse this Frank Bond for mayor? That's right. Great heaven. What else? Oh, nothing very important at the moment. I'll contact you in a few days if anything should come up. Young lady, I wish you to know that I expect a square deal in anything that I'm compelled to do. Mr. DeWitt, I assure you that you'll get a much better break than I would if the circumstances were reversed. Fair. Hey, everybody's paying up lately. What's going on? The combination made a new deal. DeWitt's in the bag. Who pulled that one? Ever hear of Rita Adams? Donna's friend? Uh-huh. Well, I think she pulled a squeeze play onto it. Now we're sitting pretty. <laughs> I'll say we are. Gee, I'll have to hurry, Bill. We have a rehearsal of our new show in a few minutes. Tell you what, darling. Suppose we have dinner here tonight and then we can go places. Hmm? Oh, I'd love that, Bill, but I'm so worried about you. Oh, what's the matter now? Why don't you give up racketeering and get a regular job? I'd like you a lot more. I see. Oh, darling, I'm only trying to get a few dollars ahead so we can get married. Oh, I know, Bill, but what you're doing is all wrong. I can't write home and say that I'm in love with the grandest guy in the world, but he's an underworld character. Yeah, I know. But I'll be out of it in a couple of months. I promise you. Well, I better run along now. And don't you worry about anything. Everything's going to be all right. Hey, Johnny, how'd they ever get the wit to go for Frank Bond? That's one thing I've never been able to figure out. Well, they have to hand it to Wood and Parrish. They're cutting out the rough stuff and using paper bullets. Paper bullets? Yeah. Votes. It's a modern way of controlling a town. I just follow instructions. Never ask any questions, Bill. It's bad business. So long. Thank you. And from the way the business is permitting, we should be getting bigger dividends pretty soon. Kurt, there's something I want you to do. Yes, what? I want you to buy those two acres of property for me. What do you intend to build on this piece of wilderness? A dog track? No. <laughs> you probably think I'm an extreme sentimentalist. But someday that's going to be my dream of a kid's playground. Take a big bank roll. I know. I've got plenty of money, Kurt. But I didn't always have it. I had a pretty thin time of it as a kid. I just, oh, I thought maybe my conscience wouldn't bother me so much if I did something to help other kids. I was raised in an orphanage. Well, that's a very fine gesture for you to make, Rita. Is this man the uh, owner or the broker? Oh, he's the, uh, he's the owner. You'll probably want a top price for it. Make the best deal you can, but get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, then you want this to apply on the purchase of the property? That's right. Oh, by the way, I mailed with his money in the plain white envelope, according to your instructions. He didn't send it back. He won't. Just let him play big shot over a microphone. We won't have any trouble controlling this town. You know, it's a funny thing, Kurt. People seem to like reform. We'll give him plenty of it. 
Yeah, that's right. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you want a receipt for this? That won't be necessary. You can't afford to cross me. No. No, that's right. I couldn't have wanted to. Oh, one more thing. I want to stay as much in the background of this deal as possible. Make that uh, purchase in the next few days. Yes, I'll take care of it this afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, sir? Will you uh, tell Miss Adams an old friend would like to see her? What is the name, please? Uh, never mind the name. I want to surprise her. I'll see if Miss Adams wants to be surprised, sir. Pardon me, Miss Adams. There's a man in the living room that says he's an old friend. Who is he? He won't give me his name. Just an old friend. How are you, stranger? Well, I certainly had a tough job locating you. Oh, it's grand to see you. Sit down. <laughs> I finally got in touch with Mickey. He told me where you were living. Are you going to be long in town? Well, permanently, I hope. You see, Interstate is opening a new office here in a few days, and I expect to be in charge of all Western business. Oh, that's marvelous. Well, at least it'll give me a chance to get acquainted with you all over again. You know, Bob, when I was 11 years old, I had a terrible crush on you. Well, I'm afraid that puppy love was mutual. I should hope so, at the rate I chased you around that orphanage. Well, it's a sense you couldn't be accused of chasing me around after you grew up. Well, I learned that magazine heroines enjoyed being sued. Maybe it cramped my style. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to see that you're adequately pursued from now on. <laughs> you bet, Al. Hold it. Oh, hello, Puggy. Hiya, Mick. How are the fights? Ah, uh, not so hot. I could lick both those guys with one hand. Oh. Hiya, fellas. Hiya, Puggy. Hey, looks like you've been doing all right. Yeah. You want in, Puggy? What's the limit? Table stakes. Okay. Did you call? No, I'm out. It's up to you. It's my bet. I'll bet the works. The works? <laughs> Thank you. I hear you fellows are going big. Yeah, we're in the money now. Oh, by the way, there's an old pal of yours in the combine. Mm, a real go-getter, too. Yeah, who? Bill Dugan. You're crazy. What do you mean? Bill Dugan's doing a bit in the tombs right now. Are you sure? Certainly. I got a letter from him just this morning. You guys picked a go-getter, all right. It's dollars to donuts, he's wearing a badge. Who okayed this guy, Dugan? Johnny Mason. Play my hand. I'm going over to see Parrish. Take a deal. Well, Mickey, sorry to get you out of bed, Mr. Parrish, but there's something wrong. Yeah? Puggy Martin blew into town this morning. Says this kid I'm working with is a phony. But he isn't Dugan. What? That's what he said. How does he come to that conclusion? Well, Dugan is his pal. He's doing time in New York right now. He uh, showed me a letter he got from him this morning. How much do you think he knows? Plenty. What I can't understand is how Johnny Mason okayed him. Yeah, that's right. I remember distinctly Johnny vouched for this fella. Huh? What happens now? You better forget all about it until you hear from me. I'll have a little talk with Wood in the morning. Maybe we'll drop a couple of boys from the payroll. I see. Good night. Hello, Chief. Hello, Joe. I want Scribbler here to tell you what he just told me. Well, what is it? The syndicate just picked up Bill Dugan and Johnny Mason. It looks bad. Oh, yeah? Well, just why are you talking, Scribbler? I picked him up on a forgery rap. Well, I... I tell you, Chief, I... I thought maybe it'd... kind of go easier for me on the rap if I gave you this information. You see? I don't think Johnny Mason crossed the syndicate. You know, he might have thought this guy Dugan was the real Dugan from New York. Never mind that. 
Where'd they take him? Well, come on, come on. Where did they take him? Go ahead, talk. Well, maybe you better take a look out at Vernon Hills. Get me a squad car. Come on. Boy, what a view. The air up here is certainly gorgeous, ain't it, Eddie? Yeah, yeah. All highways have been checked, and it isn't possible that this car involved in the kidnapping of two men could have left the city. That is all. Are you sure this is the right road? Positive. It's the only way up to the Vernon Hills. There's the road we turn off. Okay. That looks like the car. It sure does. Well, step on it. Hey, Eddie, I think we'll be in tail. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, it looks like a police car. Yeah? Yeah, we better give him a slip. Okay. up ahead. They must have turned off back there. even better than we planned. Donna, darling, you've got to be brave. Things like this happen. I was so happy. I might have known it couldn't last. <laughs> darling, please take it easy. Don't talk like that. I'll call the club and tell them you won't be down tonight. No. Oh, please don't. Please. Let's try to stop crying now, huh? Nice work, Joe. Nice work. <laughs> Did you have any trouble in getting the newspapers to cooperate with us? Not a bit. When I explained to them your reason for wanting all four men to appear dead, every paper played ball with us. Good. That's right. Hello. You did? Mm hmm How's Jimmy? Oh, that's fine. That's swell. Well, thanks very much. Keep me posted. Goodbye. That was the hospital. Mason died. What'd they say about Jimmy? Well, he still has a 50-50 chance of pulling through, and he's uh, mashing this syndicate. You know, when I was at the hospital, the doctor said that Jimmy kept asking for Donna. Don't you think it'd be a good idea if we let him see the girl? Mm, probably would. You can't take a chance like that. That boy's got to remain dead until we convict this mob. Now look, Rita, the fool is an ex-convict. has nothing to do with us. Can't you get that through that stubborn head of yours? Why can't we just go on and be a good friend? No, no, that's out. I am in love with you, and I want to marry you. I'm very fond of you, Tom. Well? Oh, I'm all mixed up. Maybe I don't deserve the happiness marrying you would give me. Oh, that's a 
lot of nonsense. Now, look, let's be definite. Will you marry me or won't you? Give me a little time to think it over. Why? You see, I have a job to do. Mm -hmm. In a few weeks, it'll be done. And then? Darling, what are you thinking? Well, I tried to persuade her not to come, but she insisted. Blue is the day ever since you went away. Blue and blue is the night without you. Blue is the song I sing to you all day long. And every dream is a blue. Dream of you. You took away the moon glow. You left the clouds in my heart, and my heart will yearn until the day you return. Until you do. Go back and take her home with us. All right. <laughs> you know, Rita, the business has increased even beyond my expectations. That's good. Let's get back to the playground. How much do I still owe? Oh, there's a balance of around six thousand dollars, I think. Next week's receipt should be more than sufficient to take care of it. And after next week, Kurt, you can count me out of the syndicate. What did you say? I'm quitting. What are you afraid of? It's not it at all. I'm going to get married. Well, congratulations. Who's the lucky man? Bob Elliott. Oh, yes, I know who he is. Never had the pleasure of meeting him. I've been in Bob ever since we were kids together in the same orphanage. Oh, then you are pretty sure you want to quit, aren't you? <laughs> Never been more certain of anything in my life, Kurt. Well, I'm delighted. Good luck to you. Thank you. Happy, darling? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> Rita Adams? Oh, that was my name. I have a warrant for your arrest. Why, what's wrong? But, officer, there must be some mistake. There's no mistake. This warrant clearly states that the grand jury has indicted Rita Adams on 11 felony counts. Oh. I'll be all right, Bob. You go along with her. I'll arrange bail. My car's over there. I don't know why, though. I do. Mickey, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? Well, say something, will you? All right. The kind of five I'm going to send you where you belong. One. Oh, Mickey. Mickey, I never double crossed nobody Two. in my life. Mickey, you wouldn't do it to me. Three. I don't want to die, Four. Mickey. Please, Mickey. If it please, Your Honor, in view of the fact that a key witness in this trial has been murdered, I move that the bail for all of the defendants be revoked. Your Honor, I resent the district attorney's unfounded insinuations. I beg Your Honor to caution the district attorney to confine his remarks to evidence he can at least substantiate. Motion sustained. You may proceed. And please confine your remarks to the case at hand. Thank you, Your Honor. We will prove that the four defendants constitute a board of their millions in racket funds. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you to look at Clarence DeWitt, 
While preaching reform, this man actually entered into a conspiracy by which he reaped huge profits from the underworld. We will prove that Kurt Parrish, a brilliant attorney, and I say that with no sarcasm, has for years been directing racketeering in this city. Nothing is more contemptible than the abuse of bail bonds. And we will prove that one of the defendants had a monopoly on this lucrative business. Objection, Your Honor. Objection, overrule. Continue. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, uh, getting that boy into this courtroom isn't going to be easy. You're right, Chief. I've got to figure out some way of getting him in without arousing suspicion. Or how Rita Adams entered into this unholy alliance is unimportant. We will present evidence proving that this woman actually directed racketeering. Possessed of beauty, charm, and extraordinary intelligence, men of the underworld were mere puppets in her ambitious program. Undoubtedly, her disarming attributes would be used to their utmost to defeat justice in this courtroom. Objection, Your Honor. The beauty, charm, and intelligence of Rita Adams is absolutely irrelevant. Objection sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. The court will recess until 2 o'clock. Joe, why don't I plead guilty? This whole trial is so unnecessary as far as I'm concerned. Bob sits there and listens to the DA smear me day after day. Well, I'll enter a plea of guilty if that's what you want. How much chance have we of beating this case? Frankly, I think we've an excellent chance. You see, everything in the indictment is based on supposition. Of course, if you plead guilty, it's, well, it's almost equivalent to convicting the others. I don't want to do that. We can win this case, Rita. But there's, there's another thing that I must tell you about. And it's pretty serious. What's that? I learned this morning the district attorney has a warrant charging you with robbery committed somewhere in the Middle West. This is all I'm in for plenty of trouble, huh? Guess yes. I deserve it. Yes, for a girl who's just got married, you've certainly had your share. Bob's been marvelous through all this, hasn't he? And you should consider him in any decision you make. He's all that matters, Joe. Well, I guess we better be getting back. It seems that in every municipal campaign, the police department is smeared by reformers. The court, Mr. Flynn, is not interested in your conclusions. Simply state what is factual. Proceed. Oh, uh, after these allegations, you signed a man to check whether or not there was corruption in the police department, or whether these charges were unfounded. Is that what you mean? Yes, Your Honor. Whom did you assign to this work? James Kelly. Oh, uh, member of your department? No, I, uh, I took him off the police eligible list. Why did you do that? Couldn't you trust a member of your own department? I didn't say that. Since the police department was alleged to be involved, I merely thought that we could get better results by assigning an undercover man to the job. That'll be all. Thank you. If it please, Your Honor, we will now call James Kelly, alias Bill Dugan. <laughs> Regard this move on the part of the district attorney as unethical. Order in the court. James Kelly, alias Bill Dugan. All right, Jimmy. Yeah. All right, Mickey. I'll take it. <laughs> I wasn't going to shoot anyone. No, you weren't, eh? No. Well, we're charging you with the murder of Bailey and Scribbler. Laugh that off. All right. Come on, Mickey.
and gentlemen, when the verdict is announced, I will tolerate no demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. What is your verdict? We find each of the defendants guilty as charged. Order. Order in the court. Order. <laughs> darling. Oh, Bob. Darling, darling, don't worry. I'll, I'll wait for you even if it takes ten years. Oh, darling. 